Welcome back to CBIT and the Intel Extreme Masters World Championship Finals, and we're finally going to get the games back underway. Uh, joining me here is, of course, Thorin, the editor-in-chief of SKGaming.com, and we're going to be starting off, or I guess continuing, you could say, with Counter-Strike 1.6, and it's going to be Mouse Sports, the European Championship, uh, or European Champions, going up against the American Champions, Team EG, who actually both of these teams right now are undefeated in the group stage. Yeah, big surprise on the part of EG as well, the teams that they've beaten. So, right now, this could be deciding who ends up winning the group, pretty much. Yeah, I mean, this is, you know, definitely a tough game for both of them. Actually, EG have been waiting on stage for a while. Uh, well, you know, Mouse Sports are actually playing their game against NTW, which had, you know, a few pauses in it there. They were discussing um, some, some issues that were going on. But in the end, it was a victory for Mouse Sports, which leaves MTW 0 and 2 at the moment. And uh, actually, MTW are setting up on the stage. Uh, for their later game against Fnatic. Um, so what do you think to this game? I mean, the champions of Europe against the champions, obviously, of uh, the Americas. Actually, um, Mouse Sports is a team who, throughout the period that this EG team has come back to CS and has been kind of gradually improving through the tournaments, they seem to run into them, and they've gotten the best of them in the past. So I think even though these are slightly different lineups, I think EG is definitely pumped up, regardless of the group situation, to want to yeah. win this game and beat this particular opponent. I think it kind of, it's kind of a way of proving to themselves like we've gotten to another level up. And then I think for Mouse Sports, I think based on the way they've been playing so far, they've had quite a good mindset. It doesn't seem like they're particularly taking any of the matches personally. They're just kind of taking care of business. And uh, they're rolling at the moment. Yeah, they certainly are. They've not really had any trouble. Um, map we're going to be playing here is going to be Inferno, uh, which, you know, for me is a map that we obviously saw a hell of a lot of the European Championship finals. Um, and Mouse Sports, you know, they kind of played their game, that slow, coordinated game, and it really worked out well for them a lot. Obviously, they uh, actually won the, uh, the European Championships as well. So we are going to get things underway and, uh, of course, starting out with the knife round here in just a, uh, in just a few seconds. And uh, I think these guys not quite ready just yet. There you can see uh, Mouse Sports, who are uh, currently 2-0 and zero after the victory, obviously, earlier on in the day in their first game. And then they uh, just recently beat MTW as well. So they're kind of firing all, on all cylinders. And a lot of people were expecting Mouse Sports to do exactly that after their uh, you know, great performance in the European Championships. Yeah. I mean, I think it, there was definitely two crowds. One crowd was wondering, you know, did they kind of peak in every sense at that event? And they played the best they could have done, and now they can't replicate that, or they can't get there every time. But from what we've seen so far, it seems like they haven't dipped back necessarily under that kind of performance level. So this could be like a new era of mass sports, possibly. It's a password. Well, we're uh, into uh, the knife round now, so... Let's see how this one goes. Obviously, the winner will get to choose which side they start on. And already we've got a, a lot of action. It's the German side that have started off really nicely here. Only Storm able to pick up a frag. Well, that's a quick comeback. And actually down to a two-on-two. Two. Now it's all on six. And EG are going to pick up the knife. And, of course, get to choose which side. And uh, no real surprises that they decide to uh, stick it out on that counter-terrorist side to uh, kick off their game. Well, I think they're going to change the terrorist there. Oh, they are, actually. So, they've, yeah, I mean, interesting choice. What do you make of that? Um, I think it's the right move, especially if, you, if it's a, a game against a team like this. I think you want to kind of set the tone yourself so then you always know where you are as CT, so you know when you can afford to save, you know when you can take risks on certain rounds where you might be in an unfavorable situation. Whereas I think if you do it the other way around, you're ending up thinking, you might end up on something, a score, like you might get maybe seven or eight rounds of CT, and you're not sure, like, are we going to be able to get those rounds to get in there? So I think this is probably the right decision. Well, let's get things underway then. It's Mouse Sports versus Team EG Group A here at the Intel Extreme Masters World Championship Finals. And that, just a quick rundown of the teams for... Team EG on the T side have got nothing, good for nothing, Storm, Lurpis, and Frod. And of course for Mouse Sports, it's Roman, Capio, Six, Gobby, and Tixo. And already we've had a little bit of an exchange between Tixo and Frod. Which uh, may set the uh, kind of early pace, if you like, in this round. Well, 
certainly. You can see that Team EG sat fairly uh, far back. Lopez at the moment starting to probe his way up towards those carpeted hallways. Fraud as well has spotted six at the end of Banana. Well, let's get around to Lopez, who is going to be the first man to make any kind of move out into this netted site, which right now, not sure how well it's uh, defended. I think one man may be deep in there. That's good for nothing, will kill six. And that's a good little opening for EG. As we will now see Lerpis taking a peek, and he had uh, the man there had his back to Lerpis, who's finally now gone into that site to try and defend. But Lerpis is in a position to move in, and he will catch Tixo moving around in that bomb site. Will take his head off, and that's a uh, second kill of the round for Team EG. And, you know, Lerpis is actually the man that's caused such a huge distraction here over at this netted site. God be the only one to get a kill. Let's watch Frod now as... Actually, he's working his way back around. You can see that bomb is now going to be planted. It's three versus three. In comes Got B from the side. Roman and Capio chiming in as well. And Mouse Bots are going to pick up that pistol round after such a, uh, you know, a quite a close call for them. Yeah, I mean, it certainly seemed like they uh, had some chances there. But also, I think EG's timing on when to push their guys in was quite well done. They kind of seemed to sync up at the right moments. So second round, Mouseports obviously having that early lead and we're going to be seeing Team EG rocking the Deagles in this round. Let's see if they can pick up any guns early on. Famas in the hands of Tixo and Roman. I think the other three, well, in fact Six has a Famas as well. Copy does have that Colt and it looks like they're going to be making their way into this uh, banana site which will be defended by Six. Storm is taking damage as well. He has killed God B. That could be an important opening kill here for the American side. And they are going to hit this site heavy. Let's go to six because he's now the man that will be defending. You can see that he is actually uh, flashed up on blind. And he's having to defend very, very deep. He does have a teammate now moving in as a bomb gets planted. This is a good second round for Team EG. Still their wait. There's one man up at the boxes. And this is good enough. patience though with the, with the amount of time on the bomb timer here. Still plenty of time four mouse ports to get in and six struggling to make that decision and it looks like mouse ports aren't going to go for this they're going to give the second round away interesting decision actually five versus four i mean those deagles there there was a galil with fraud but that's pretty much it as far as the weapons went so you know mouse ports deciding let's keep the uh, the guns for the next one which obviously you know is Optimal. If they'd have gone for that and lost their weapons, then they would have been really screwed moving forward. Well, plus, I mean, now sports have no way of knowing that Storm has such low health. And if they kill him, then all of a sudden it becomes a much more winnable round. So they're thinking we were against five guys. They're in the best sight in terms of being able to cover all the angles. So they, they thought to themselves, better not to gamble on it. But actually, it may well prove that that would have been a worthwhile gamble if you'd have rushed in there. You could have really turned the, the economic sort of game on its head. Whereas now if you lose this round, you're in real trouble. Well, right now you can see how the setup lies for both sides. And uh, good for nothing, actually. Could meet an opponent here any second. He's been boosted up into those apartments by Storm. He is going to edge see his way around. See if Tixo plays, though. He usually likes to play on the right side. Here we go. Tixo watching. And Tixo will open up the fragging for Mouse Sports. And that's a very valuable first kill. They've stopped that boosted man up in there. Now the four on five situation will work against EG as that clock is starting to tick down. Just under 50 seconds remaining in this round. But you can see that Lerpis has done a bit of sneaking of his own. He's actually all the way up in this banana site. Who's there? Actually, yeah, he's got people there. So they need to be very, very careful here because Capio is in a position to start defending this site as nothing will get the first kill. Capio backing off here just a second as he pre-fires. Will get the kill onto Lerpis. It's four versus three. Flash is going in. Bomb planted by EG. Oh, he's Capio's got a grenade. Got a grenade. This could be so yeah. dangerous. Nothing now. surely will die if this goes anywhere near him. Actually, it landed more towards Fraud. This has got to be a situation that Mouse Sports are going to attack. Capio still hanging back for uh, the rest of his team to get in there. He knows there's one behind the box. Nothing will peek out onto God Beat. But they are fairly low. It's now all on Fraud. Tixo comes around. And Mouse Sports may be bounced back here. That bomb ticking away, but I think he's got it in time. Yes, he yeah. has, and Mouse Sports will regain the lead. And that's, that's what they've essentially wanted to do on the earlier round with the Famas is. 
but then just having those farm asses and not knowing that they have them kind of in positions where they can rush in it's what made them not want to do it but we saw that's the, that's the style mouse like to play cts on this map they're not going to aggressively retake unless it's one of the players who already plays in that site so they like to slow it right down move in as a team check each corner use all your flashes and nades later on in the round as opposed to earlier on to just stop that rush outright you can see here that obviously Money, not the uh, strongest point of EG's game right now after uh, they bought those AKs in the uh, third round and then lost it. Here's a peek from Roman and the flash came in from behind as well. Great play by uh, Mouse Sports. Now all is left to Storm. Tixo was there and that was a cheeky little move from Mouse Sports. And, well, EG may be a bit unlucky to be caught all bunched up and I think as that flash went in, they even almost just lined up for him as well. Yeah, it's clearly something that was planned for Mouse Sports there. You saw them try it once before, before they'd stepped out. Just a good way to guarantee the round. Let's see then. PG will change their uh, strategies up for this one. And, uh, there was a little bit of banter before this game. Lerp is saying, uh, come on then, God B, show us your world-famous strats. Yeah, I know he's a great so, fan of the running backwards up the bananas, Lerpis. Pioneered by God B. Look at the, this push from EG. They are going to move out now. Let's get around to those defenders. Roman actually pulled back. Where was the man in there? It was God B. Tikto is dead as well. So let's get around to Roman. Three on five. All three Mouse Sports players still with full health, although Capio only have enough for Mass. And yeah, they're not going to go for this one. They're going to allow it to uh, the bomb to explode. Will work their way out of that site and look to hold on to these weapons. But you can see that EG are already spreading, and trying to catch up with them. Although I think they're going to choose the uh, wrong destination, if you like, to try and hunt down these three mouse sports players. Well, he'll bring the score back to 3 2 anyway. There's no doubt that Team EG, of course, are going to pick up this round victory. The question is will they get anywhere close to uh, get the weapons? They're not going to. They're uh, only as far up as that terrorist spawn. So. Team EG come back, 3-2. to two. Let's see if they can level things up. I think a big factor as well of EG's earlier upset where they beat Fnatic was because it was a CT side of train that they got some rounds on. It was Fraud Zorping, so it'll be interesting to see if he's going to op that middle area on this map and how much he's going to go for that. Bearing in mind, we know the style of attack that Mars Sports wants to put on them. Here we go. We're going to see a two-man boost inside that middle area. Lurpis was caught out. Without really even looking, nothing decides, well, I'm not going to push that area. Six is taking damage, I'm guessing, over by Banana, yeah. Actually, Six does have that AWP. First shot missed. Grenades and a teammate to cover him. And it looks like EG are going to back away from that area. They don't want to go head-to-head -head with Six with their AKs. Now they settle in again, just waiting for an opening to appear. Yeah, I think you're going to see EG run a defense. bit more of the clock here. Yeah, this, as you can see, is a real deep defense from Mouse Sports. They've got that first kill, and they know that you know, if they lose a man, then it's going to be back to a 4-on-4, four and, four, and probably that's the side that's going to be hit by their opponents. If they don't show themselves, they're not going to give anything away. Roman's picked off nothing, and the remaining three players are going to try and hit into this banana site. Six will open up onto Fraud, but... Good for nothing and Storm are still alive and they've got themselves into the bomb site. They've not seen the man behind them. That was Capio. It's now all on Storm. Bomb is down, I think, just off to his right here. And he's now facing head to head. He's down to nothing as Roman comes in and Mouse Sports will extend it to 4-2. Yeah, a bit, a bit of shaky aim there from Capio for a second when he was right behind the man there. But he got the kill just in time to make it count. And that's key as well, knowing you've got that bomb down and you can then just kind of zero in on that. You don't have to worry about where, where the other guy's going. Just keep your eye on that. Looks like Roman's going to get aggressive down middle here. It's an eco. No. That grenade is a lot of damage to Lopez and Frod. They're uh, a little bunched up towards that middle area. They have killed Got Roman, though. Looks as though he wants to kind of push up this um, apartment area, which is going to be seen in a couple in a second. Yeah, as we just peeked away there, Tixo uh, came through into the apartment area and did pick up the Gobby's first kill of the round. Flank here. Yep, Gobby has got the kill. That's going to force EG to actually uh, make somewhat of a quicker move, I think, off to the other side of the map. Six is in perfect position here, but he just stays. 
Here is six. Oh, and wow. well. Yeah, that was kind of crazy. I mean, you saw there, that, that was an HLTV error. He literally just didn't even wait for the scope on that second shot. And they happened to just line up. Which in the situation was the right move for EG. They had, they had to kind of rush the upper there, knowing he has to make that distance back to the far wall. But at the same time, a player like Six, when his aim is on, I mean, he's one of those players where I don't even think necessarily his tracking's crazy, but his just pure reaction time's really, really impressive. Here comes an early need to alt mid from uh, Mount Sports. Of course, this one will be an eco for EG. Let's see if they can pull anything off. Nothing actually just it's firing through the smoke. Did get himself one kill. Tinko is there. You can see these two remaining players for EG. God, Beast is going to mop them up here. Yeah, as they come through that balcony area, this is an easy kill. Should be an easy second kill as well for Godby as he does finish off. Both of them actually uh, come into headshots and that will be a 6-2 scoreline. We look down the scoreboard, 12-2 for Tixo at the moment. Having a really great game. EG obviously a little bit so earlier looks on. Looks like he's going to try and down middle here. Maybe not. He'll have a look, but I don't think that uh, he's going to find EG willing to be too kind of crazy I mean, Mouse with the Mouse have peak. switched it up here by putting him to the right side since they've played him in B so much and being effective with it. They know that obviously e um, EG are going to want to attack the A site now. So this is the perfect time to switch it up. And we remember at the European Finals how crucial God B's play in this end of balcony area was. Capio's going to call this in now. He's just seen two of them. Moving their way up that banana. It's good for nothing. I think clip, uh, clipped by six there. But EG are working their way towards a banana push. Yeah, it's looking like they're trying to fake the mid and then go there. Let's get back around to Capio because he's got the uh, defense going to in pull off. In. Here we go. Flashes up off the boxes. Capio actually just switching position. Didn't want the grenades to actually give his position away. Here comes one. Capio will down Lurpis. Looking for more as the second and third start to move into this site. But... He's not going to find them as he's down by nothing. It's now oh, five on three, no close range from six, and that will bring us to a three versus three, although that bomb is ticking away. Health is with the uh, EG side as well. The Still time to over. work with here if you mouse spots. You just keep, you wait for one more pick if you can. Once he smokes clear, six probably isn't going to get an opportunity to uh, Storm here have has anyone a flash. This could be crucial if he waits to the right time to throw it. Here comes God B onto the wall looking for the first man. Flashes have gone in. Godby will start to work his way around as he gets one kill, but they're absolutely all over him. And Tixo deciding, well, that's just not worth it. Two versus one there. And he gets himself away. And uh, nothing died in the blast, but Storm, I think... Oh, no, he died as well. They both died. Um, so that will be another round on the board for EG. And, you know, they right now matching one round for every two of Mouse Sports, which you may say may just be good enough for them. It, it may well be if they can really put together a strong CT side, but at the same time, it, it seems like EG, a couple of these rounds they've won haven't been that decisive. So you, you kind of feel like at any moment, if they let up at all, now spots are really going to pull away. Right now, Lopez is down. Tixo is off to the uh, right hand side of middle. Magobi has it all to do here because he's going to be fighting people from apartments any second. Uh, he's got Roman off to his side, which is an important ally to have in this side. We have got a fast rotation from six here. There's the plan. Roman looking for the man behind the boxes. And, uh, I don't think we're going to go for this one. Now four versus two. Bomb already in uh, in position and ticking down. And now sports are going to elect to save. So Team EG going to bring this back to a 6-4 scoreline. And with five rounds to go, this one could be uh, you know looking quite level when we get to that halfway point. Let's see if EG will chase. Right now it looks like Fraud could be the uh, only man to get anywhere near them. And actually you could spot six if it just peaked a little bit earlier there, but besides not probably worth it, and Mouse Sports will drop another round. So 6-4, as I said, five more to go. Where are you expecting it to go from here? Because, I mean, EG now have put two in a row together. Do you think they can continue it? I think Mouse actually could really put kind of the hammer on this game if six gets aggressive here, the banana, because I feel like... If they can lock that off early so they don't even have to worry about those fake pushes up and not knowing which they're going to attack, I mean, that's crucial. Oh, he was so close there, I think, to uh, taking down nothing. And 
Uh, Capio's Shot was in actually position, lined though. up for him. They're not going to know where he is here. Oh, right here is Capio playing aggressive in the smoke. He'll make it a hat trick. Almost finishing off there with the USP. Well, he's done his job by a long way. Oh, now leaves so nothing low. with. Well, nothing. <laughs> Good Great one. grenade there by Roman. He didn't even risk peeking and dying. Bomb down, though. That's important, at least, for nothing. But basically, he's just one hit with anything and he's dead and it will come from Roman who's coming around the back of B. The fuse will come in and Mass Sports will get another round. But it was uh, you know, that little push there from Capio who played aggressive in the smoke on Banana. It was quite really a brilliant little off. play because of all the places you were expecting him to be, that was the one you wouldn't. You, you might think he might be behind you on the right or maybe he'll be up on the left looking down. But the one spot you weren't looking immediately at, he's just dead on through the smoke. And we saw he was just in perfect position to spray right through them. Good for nothing here. Only a deagle in hand. That's the beauty when you've got a player like Six who's aims on and he's kind of feeling confident with the AWP like that. You can put him in that position and then even when he dies, the information you can then immediately use to possibly win the round. And then what do we need EG do now? Now that it looks like they're going to try and go and attack the God B position. Yeah, it certainly looks that way. Let's get around to Godby. See what he can do. He's seen the first man move out. He's actually decided to leave that man alone, and Tixo will mop that one. As the bomb is now down inside of the big pit. Fraud, one versus five. Has got full health, though. Let's see what he can do. Shot through the wall onto Tixo, and, well, I think Tixo wasn't the man he was even aiming for there. Uh, it was Godby, but Godby will finish off and Mouse extend even further, and they'll guarantee themselves now the lead going into the second half. Yeah, nothing there was really unfortunate. He jumped right out behind Tixo, but in the time it took him to spray Tixo to like 19 health, he'd spun around and killed him. So that really could have kind of given the other guys a chance to get in and fully swarm onto uh, Godby, but we didn't see it. I think Godby's going to get aggressive again in this balcony area. Maybe not. That's an eco anyway. Yeah, you can see the uh, tendered position, maybe. Roman is actually watching for that middle area. And I think we may see a boost from EG any second up into those apartments. We clear that up a little. But right now, Roman, as you can see, is quite content to just sit back and wait for these men to push. There's his first one. Actually pulls away from it as the flash has come in. Good for nothing's got the first frag. Roman will look for more as Tixo takes down Storm as well. And we should probably get around because I think they're pushing in off to that right hand side. Only nothing remains. The bomb's down and he's only got around about 10 HP, I guess. And Tixo was in the site quite deep. And that was an easy round, of course, on the Eco with Team EG. So you probably weren't expecting all that much from them anyway. But Mouse Sports will move up to nine. And at the moment, it's not even that we're necessarily seeing just outskilled rounds here from the mouse sports guys it just seems like they're collectively they're just making more and more good decisions and sooner or later those decisions pay off and they win the rounds looks like a quick push are they going to be hit from the side here comes the grenade tixo will time that and jump out as well as he hits ahead of nothing and six is locked right off the spot with this banana at the moment Here's Roman off to the left. Good for nothing was watching the right while two of his teammates go down. Then Tixo comes in from the opposite side. And that was perfect crossfire set up from Mouse Sports. And now it's all on Storm. The bomb is actually down here. Storm somehow peeks out and takes down two of them. But Roman was there with a deagle to finish off. And you know, Mouse lost two in that middle area. But it wasn't really a uh, much of a scary round from in the end. And now they move up to 10. 10-4. We've seen that at the, uh, the uh, air site over and over again. It seems like mouse spots are really in tune with each other on when to step out. I don't know whether that's just great communication or whether they're just kind of in sync in terms of game sense. But we saw there, each guy was stepping in and out as the, the opposite side was being watched by the EG player. So an absolute nightmare of a round for EG, but and it just shows kind of the, the level that we're seeing from mouse spots. Oh, Sixers grenade there. Obviously a little bit of a luckily timed one. He's got cover here, but will be flashed up and has to back away. Will Capio be spotted? He has been spotted behind this box, and that was a good little bit of work from EG, making sure that they covered those boxes because mouse sports tend to use them a lot and use kind of the uh, edge of that roof to 
fling the flashes back. And even with his backup gone, you see here that Six isn't really willing to give up those key positions. He likes where he has it. He's holding right on the edge of the angle. And he's definitely a player who plays to his own strengths as opposed to just purely trying to focus in on the weakness of the opponents. As Tixo gets himself to as surely they're going to follow up here. They're not. And Tixo was down to uh, just below that half health. And you can see now switching his position to attack from the opposite side. Great reactions from Tixo. Leaves only Storm alive. Oh, actually, good for nothing, he's still alive, but only with one HP. Does somehow pick up a frag at the end, but surely he can't pull this one off, and Godby will have him. And that is going to be the end of the uh, first half, and it will end 11-4 to Mousebots. And if you remember those rounds where you were saying, like, it looked like EG were kind of creeping closer, and if they keep trading a few rounds, and, you know, maybe... But what we did see was they then kind of... It seemed like they lost a bit of the gas in their engine, and then... Mouse sports just stayed at the same level, making good decisions, make kind of team playing it, and they just ran away with it towards the end there. And now there's a huge amount of pressure on these EG players because basically you can. I mean, unless you win this pistol, you're almost in a situation where you're never going to be able to save any of these rounds, and you have to put together one of those flawless halves. Well, right now we have a uh, couple of issues, I think, with the headset. You can see uh, Mouse Sports on your screen there, looking like they're ready to go and, uh, you know, push themselves up to a three out of three kind of record, if you like, in the group stage. They've already won their first two games. Well, now we're looking to turn that into three, which should guarantee them, I guess, the, uh, a, a top two position, I think, because the teams below them are one and one. With uh, Fnatic obviously losing to EG, obviously if they beat EG here, they'll be one and one as well. And so plus, well, Mars Sports will of course be playing against Fnatic in the last stream game. Yeah. So hopefully there's a little bit of spice there, just to purely in terms of the rematch factor. But also, you know, we'll know by then the situation for both teams. And it seems like actually the most impressive thing about Mars Sports, in, from what I've seen in these early games, has been that it hasn't really taken those crazy frags that it did at the European finals. There were times there where you felt like, yeah, that's a brilliant player, but at the same time, if he misses one of those bullets, they might lose this whole game. They might not even make it to the next stage. They might not even make it to a third map in the final. But instead, what we've seen here is just the consistency has probably been the most impressive thing. It just seems like they, as a team, they're just working really well together on enough rounds that it just takes a monumental effort from the uh, opposition just to even put a string of rounds together. And even if they lose one round, they're making the correct decisions next round to get the next two. And that's very, very difficult to beat that kind of consistency. It just grinds you down. And it's interesting, actually. The uh, player with the headset problem is Lurpis, who is, of course, the, uh, the strat caller for the CG lineup. So. If that was the case earlier on in the first half, that may have impacted on how EG played, but I'm sure they would have called a pause if it was you know, something completely bad that was going on. And I saw in, a, in an interview with Nothing that he mentioned that one of the things EG try to do now, and one of the ways they think it's kind of changed their style, bringing in good for Nothing, is that since he was a strat caller before for Turmoil and Gravitas, they feel like by having him in the team when Lurpus dies, then he can kind of take over mid-round and call the rest of the strats. Yeah. So I actually wonder whether that's possibly working against them in the sense that, I mean, both guys aren't necessarily the same type of strat caller. So maybe, maybe he takes over and calls something different. Maybe that was the rounds they won. Maybe it was the ones they lost. It's hard to really know that. But it's something to think about, definitely. Especially bearing in mind, that I think the one problem we saw for EG there was they, they really didn't know how to fake and go to the other site successfully. They wanted to kind of be stubborn sometimes. Well, we're going to get the second half underway. Of course, the score 11-4 in favor of the European champions, Mouse Sports. Will the American champions, EG, be able to claw their way back An into this game? Aggressive push here by EG. They want to engage early here. They're pushing all the way down Banana in middle. Yeah, and to be fair, Mouse Sports, I think, weren't expecting that. Capio had his back. But ironically, Mouse Sports are going to get right in and plant here. Yeah, so even that number's you disadvantage, expected. you know, they're going to all be in position. Here comes nothing. He's actually going to spot Tixo, who is looking completely the opposite way. Only Roman picking up the kill oh, so far for Mouse Sports. Kill there by that, that grenade onto God B. 
Let's get around to this man in the sight. And actually, it was six in there. We do have, uh, I think it's Roman at close range firing off the shots. And he's going to go for the knife kill. Gets himself one. And now they're going to finish off after uh, nothing was knifed as well. And Frod deciding, well, I'm just going to get the job done here rather than letting that time actually run out or risk anything stupid happening. And uh, he will get that defuse in. So EG have picked up the pistol in the second half. They're bringing the score back to 11-5. Now let's see how many rounds they can put on the board before they let Mouse Sports back in. It really felt like the crucial kill there was Storm's grenade onto God B in the pit because God B had a flash and a grenade and he was just kind of waiting, biding his time so that when he spotted them, he'd be able to flash the guy rushing in and then probably save the nade to throw into the site. So he didn't get any of that off and obviously he died with the grenades. Interesting decision here from Mouse Sports. Two Deagle, uh, sorry, three Deagles, two AKs. Roman will have to make this count. Nothing is down to, I guess, around God five is getting HP. ready to flash this area. So I think that you're probably going to push right up once this flash goes off. Well, they know that those AKs are in play now. They'll be trying desperately to get them out of it. Nothing down Roman to three health in. here spammed through the wall, I think. Here we go. Roman spots one. Didn't actually land the shot. And that grenade will bounce around nastily. The frog Mouse has sports. a lot to do here. If he doesn't peek here, he's going to be facing a whole onslaught of people, you get the feeling. I mean, Mouse sports do have the uh, control of that middle area, but I think they're a little worried that someone's going to come in from behind. Capio actually up in apartments decides he's going to follow his team out. And this would actually be the right time the to other go side. to be because the man who's playing the swingman role, nothing has the three health. And even though he's rotating now, then you're playing versus two guys with a FAMAS and one has three health. So if Mouse can go in here, they've got a really good chance of turning this round into their favor. There go the smoke. Let's watch Good for Nothing. He's the one that's got to do all the work here with the FAMAS, oh, the but it's actually down. Nothing who gets two. Six will finally deal with him, but they don't know that Good for Nothing's in at the back as well. He gets another two. And it's now on Tixo, who's got basically Nothing. Frod came in. And well, two kind of brilliant individual performances there from Good for Nothing and Nothing. So hold on to that sight, and Team EG will bring us back to 11 6. Yeah, those kills from Nothing really were the turner there. Because, I mean, maybe he gets one of them and you still get in. But it was that second one as he was moving away. There was a little bit of luck to it. But it was also a, a really crucial to just put the hammer down on Mouse. Nice little aggressive start from the Americans. And uh, they should just mop up all these kills. And actually, it will be Lerpis to finish through the smokes onto six. Easy round for EG. And you have to wonder, you know, they managed to beat Fnatic earlier on in the tournament if they can beat Mouse Sports here as well. I mean, is this going to be the event for Team EG so far in their, uh, you know, their, I guess you could say the, the new project with after the American scene kind of died out with, you know, with CGS and what have you, came back here and maybe this is the event for them. It's, it's definitely kind of the proving ground for them because for them to win an event like this, just the amount of styles they would have to play against, the number of great teams overall, once they got to the final, they'd have to play. So I, you, no one could say that they didn't earn it if they were to get a good placing at this event. Well, I think now would be a good time to do it. They've had, I think, pretty much exactly a year to the day even since they uh, obviously came to the season three finals. A long way to go in this match though still. Oh, Still yes. a lot of work to be done here to kind of lay the foundation to even win this match. Whereas at the moment for Mouse Sports, you don't necessarily worry or panic that you've lost a few of these rounds. You're just biding your time and thinking, okay, we get guns, and then you know we gradually win these rounds back. All we need is one or two here. We can afford to trade with them. That's the key. They don't have to stress about putting together strings of rounds. Good for nothing to open up the frag. Maybe uh, stop this push, but in comes six. Nothing was hiding by CT Archway. That's a dangerous grenade, but Mouse Sports will follow in here anyway. There's a man in big pit that needs to be dealt with quickly. Headshot is good for nothing. There. Yeah, through the box. That was a big kill. And there's Frod as well. So it leaves just Lerpis, one versus three, and he's going to go for this one. There's the first man. It was Roman just after the bomb was planted, and Mouse Sports. You now, as you said, maybe uh, they'll be just favouring the whole crawl over the finish line rather than sprint. So far, we haven't seen great execution in, on this half from Mouse Sports t on the Terrace side. But then again, it isn't necessarily needed in this game. We know their position in the group. We know that they only needed those five rounds to get over the winning line here. So instead, it kind of feels like 
they just kind of putting together a core effort, like let's get around here. Okay, this round didn't work. Save the guns, let's get the next round. But here we have Ford with his AWP looking right down the middle here. So if they ever decide to go back to B, then we may well see some AWP in action. That oh, was a good bit of play with the flashes down there, but no, Capio was completely here. blind. This Ford will take his first of the game. I think there's a man the aggressively round. up to his right as well here. But he wants to push out, it looks like. Tixo's got a big job to do now as he starts to move through apartment. Storm will go down. He's seen Frod there off towards that area and actually will be a very clean kill onto Frod as we come back down to a two versus two. Can Mouseports get the boy in position? Tixo covering from one side, but good for nothing's come in. Here comes Roman. One of them comes in. It's oh, now a one versus one. Huge. Good for nothing versus Roman. Flashes out from the German. And a grenade here. This could be, do so much damage. Here comes a grenade. Good, Good for nothing. It's down to it. 60. The defuse is started and actually it will be called the defuse. Very, wow. very cheeky for Good for Nothing. And Roman, well, I mean, in that situation, you're probably expecting it to be a fake anyway. And that will bring EG back. A little bit of luck for EG in the sense that you have no way of knowing necessarily that he has that second flash. But once, once he throws that first one and you start and you keep going, I mean, it's impossible for Roman to know that you're defusing there. He's going to have to imagine that you're kind of waiting to, to engage him. And that's actually the kind of round that could kind of put, put uh, the mouse player's backs up a little bit, just from, from being the, the point of view of annoying them a little bit, getting under their skin. Plus, Capio hasn't killed anyone this game so far in this half. Broad has a nice boost here, though, up over that netted area. So if they do decide to slowly push up that area again, they're not going to be able to see him. See that six. Should he peek out, it's probably going to be met by Storm. God B is starting to move in there as well. And six is now going to peek out. And I think Storm not quite peeking over towards this area. Our sports will run down the clock a little bit more. Maybe down to 40 before they decide to make a move. They're about to peek on Ford here, it looks like. Here we Without go. Knowing. There's the first push. Storm was watching from Big Pit. God B's actually uh, probing over towards Banana Bomb site, which is interesting. And he has Frod in the boost. Where's the men? Actually, they've both been down as Lurpis was behind him. Oh, but Tixel with the bomb is creeping behind them. Yeah, this is cheeky. He's going to be fighting, fighting two guys there. Ah, kind of unlucky for Tixel there. I think he was expecting them all to have moved around. And uh, God B actually not checking properly off to the left. So EG will claw it back to just a three round deficit 12 9. I mean, they're 5-1 up in this half, and uh, the scoreboard 10-2 and two for Frod, 0-6 and six for Capio. Capio probably has to uh, do a little bit more this half if Mouse Sports are going to win this game. Here's a rush. Here's the defending man. Probably nothing is going to be the one to uh, really make an impact on this round. Good for nothing gets himself one, but he has nothing moving in from that CT archway. Good for nothing picking up most of the kills, but nothing Bob's is there. Down, oh, grenade from Frod. Where's the last man? It was Roman, and nothing straight through the box. Not a problem apparently for him. We'll bring us back to 12-10. Game on. Crucially, that grenade managed to prevent that bomb going down just before it would have gone. I'd like to see Mouse kind of try one of their classic. Um, fix here, like kind of push up the middle, hold it, and then go back to B. It seems like in this game they haven't necessarily played their style like that. Rod just it, having a EG uh, have kind of look. Been, kind of been waiting and haven't overcommitted to any of the sites. Looks like we are going to get this standard setup on here, here again. And yeah, Tixo, of course, taking his usual position here, watching up into those carpeted hallways, and let us see so Rod called into well. action. Lopez is any second now if Tixel peeks forward, he'll be engaged. And I wouldn't be surprised to see him peek down in about 5 or 10 seconds. No, he'll, he'll be knowing that he's there as well. Oh, Lopez did decide to make the move and he's taken damage straight through the wall from Tixel, but surely the rest of this push is going to start working in. Massports have decided to actually back away. Grenade onto Frod, who is by that CT archway. There he is. Tixel's aim this game's actually been really on from what I've seen. Well, Six had already moved out there through the smoke. Tixel is going to move into the side, but let's watch Storm because 
He's actually on the balcony as one comes through. He does kill Tixel, but he's quickly down by his teammate. He's going to say now that, nothing. Yeah, yeah not going to go for this. What I think is interesting actually about Tixel's game when you watch him a bit is if you uh, if you're not too familiar with it, it might not look like he has a lot of pure kind of just raw aim, a highlight player in that sense. But it seems like he's he's really good at selecting the right technique on the right distance with the rifles. That's what makes him so effective at those areas like the uh, carpeted area. He knows kind of which technique to use at which part of the steps and how far along. Bring in mind you're kind of fighting at three different distances as you move up that area. And it's so crucial when you want to attack A, that slow manner up the middle. You cannot ever allow yourself to be flanked without knowing. 13 to 10, the current score. And of course, six in a row to win. And one of the problems here for that. Mouse Sports, I think, is that Capio is playing up this um, ladder area, but he hasn't really had any impact. Like, I think because he hasn't got any kills, he's never going to peek just right down the banana area. So he's not able to even be kind of preventative to the uh, rotations from the EG guys. And that's just going to make EG want to rotate nothing back over, like swingman style for the middle, which is what we've seen. Now they've got four and eight, because they, they don't have any threat coming from any kind of backstab from Capio at the moment. He's just content to hang back. Here come the smokes to cover from the CT archway. There's a deep one from Roman as well. As the flashes move around, Lurpis is hanging in there. Where is Lurpis? There he is. He's made it two. Frod will join him. Finally, they get rid of Lurpis from that right-hand side of mid. And he has got B sprays down. Oh, two of them off to that left mid. And he's really brought this round back. Tixo looking for another one in big pit. God B will be the man to find him. And this could be this a five-man for God B. Let's see if he gets it right onto the bomb plant. Grenade too slow there. Did do a tiny bit of damage, but the bomb is ticking away. He is fraud with his AWP. He knows where he is, He's got though. to really uh, maybe push in for this one now with the score possible to go up to 14. Takes his shot, misses, oh, and God B will take all five kills from that round. And a man who was so crucial to the Mouse Sports victory at the European Championships has done it here again. So you see the kind of confidence that Mouse Sports are playing with. They can, it kind of feels inevitable that they're going to win this game. In that kind of situation, he... He, doesn't, he can really make Frod take the game to him, push him, get aggressive on him, knowing he has an AWP or he has to go back and pick up a Colt. It's another way to use up a little bit of time. But instead, he just aggressively peeks out on him. And the good thing about this is that if you, when you have that style of play and you keep showing it, as we've seen with Six, it actually makes the defense then more tentative. So you buy yourself a little bit of time later. So it works either way. It depends. If you can have success with a certain style, it's then gonna, it's gonna stick in the mind of the other team. And now we're seeing Capio finally actually punish that banana area. Six is going to start to work his way in. That flash actually sending the left mid defender away. Will they peek back? I don't think so with uh, all the spam that's moving in there. Here comes the grenade. I think it was nothing that was around. Here comes Six again. Manages himself too. That man off to the left. Nothing is still there. Or was until Tixo found him. And now it's Frod and good for nothing. Frod will deagle the head off Tixo. He's not going to find himself any weapons, I don't think, as fraud will go down. It's now all on good for nothing. Only got a USP. This is four from Mouse Sports with AKs, and Roman will make it match point for Mouse Sports at 15 to 10. Of course, Team EG now not going to be able to win this game, but they can still try and hold on for a draw. But they have fraud to win does five not in have a round. An AWP here. He's got a call. It looks like they want to push down aggressively. Yeah, certainly looks that way, but there's a three-man aggressive push actually from Mouse Sports as well. It's a good grenade though to start on the round. Rod's going to be, uh, I think, pretty instrumental to this defense around middle. But Mouse Sports are probably going to try and cut him out of the equation by going around. You can see that... Lopez could do so much damage here if he was to peek out. Yeah, and he has peeked out. I mean, they know he's there now, but it's still up to him. His positioning here could completely crush this attack. As I think Mouse actually actively want to engage in kind of a just a one-on-one -on -one battle for a second. <laughs> there was Lopez as he actually uh, climbed up onto the window. I mean, they've still got time to work with here. All they have to do is catch the EG players on their own. Yeah. I think EG are, are going to play it more cleverly and just kind of stay back. And if I, actually, if good for nothing does not peak here. No man, they're, they're going to go to it, it looks like. 
Great start great Roman. And now, Will course, Storm has it for his health. He has a really good position here. But he's going to be down by Capio, who's not had the greatest of second halves, but they brought this back to a two versus two mount now, Mouse Sports. And this could be a great finishing round if they're able to pull things off. Let's have a look at where Nothing is. <laughs> if good for Nothing doesn't Such throw a his dangerous flash decision, here. and Nothing is actually going to peek out. Did the damage, but Roman will get the kill, and it's now all on Good for Nothing. One versus two, moves in, gets the kill onto Roman. There's the bomb. And Capio, is he going to go for him? He's going to move in here, but is he going to be too late? Oh my god! Wow. What was that? He missed. <laughs> <laughs> His problem there was he started shooting before he started moving. Which kind of amateur him a stick. He didn't, there, really. he didn't adjust his aim, though. He was actually just spraying completely to the right of his head. Well, it genuinely seemed like he kind of just panicked in the moment, and <laughs> instead of moving his mouse, he just pressed his key on his keyboard. But, well, happens to the best of them. 15-11. And I know who's going to be kicking themselves if they actually draw this game now. Although, Fraud has a Famas here. Yeah, a couple of Famas. Nothing could be very, very dangerous and actually peeked out, saw the man right in front of him. Good for nothing will back up and they've lost Roman early on in the round. That's a big hit for Mouse Sports. And that's a gun given away based on the positioning. Ooh. That's two guns given away here. Yeah, Capio's going to try and follow this one up. At least take that position where actually from here, if they decide to peek, they may not just check that. And no, EG's actual health, they've lost so little health on these kills, that's what's so crucial. And there's another free kill on the bomb. <laughs> yeah, good for nothing. Really starting to mop up this round. It's now all on Tixo. Bomb down over by good for nothing. Those boxes. And I imagine nothing's going to come in to uh, give him some support as well in a second. But you can see that good for nothing. Not making it easy for Tixo. Almost kind of baiting him out. And nothing will peak just as he moves into position. And that will be 15-12. Three away from a draw. But will Mouse Sports get it? I mean, they really are starting to uh, get to the point where they are crawling over the finish line. The problem here for EG is they can't afford to make any mistakes whatsoever. So if my spots continue to go slow, then I think it's going to take players like what we saw in that last round, actually. We're going to need some kind of aggression from EG at times. So they can get an early bead on where my spots want to go and what they want to do. Six, Roman and Tixo already starting to work in there. Let's quickly get around to Storm. He's going to actually peek out. Didn't really do much damage to Six, but... And they're going to get aggressive here, it looks like, onto Tixo's position. Ooh, Flash is moving out. Storm will peek straight through them. He's managed to double, and surely this could be another round. Tixo actually following in with a Deagle. Should it get a weapon? The Goppy takes the head of Frod. Three versus two. Still doable here for Mouse. Crucially, this nothing is over kill. at the B site, so if they can attack here soon, they're going to have a chance. This next kill so crucial for Mouse Sports if they're able to uh, pick up this round. Godby has no idea where the men are apart from that one. Lurpis took a bit of killing. Godby comes in with his second, and it's now all or nothing. One versus two. Godby and Tixo with the bomb ticking away. And of course, losing this round means game over, so and nothing a flashbang is going to move in. He's just going to hold it and wait for Godby to call, I think. There, there is the flash and the shots come out. Godby will take it and that will be the match for Mouse Sports 16 to 12. Of course, they'll play out the final two rounds, but Godby really turning that one on its head. And uh, Capio can uh, save his blushes for a different game. Yeah, well, we saw there, it, wa it wasn't even necessary that EG did make their mistake. It was kind of the opposite. Mouse Sports had been holding along for so long that when they kind of lifted it up for a round, all they needed was the one round to get it done. So they. They did kind of let it get away from them a little bit too much there. There were a couple of silly mistakes. But still, despite the scoreline, I still think it was a quite, a, quite a convincing victory from us. It felt like they got ahead enough early on that they kind of made their point at that, at that juncture of the game. Yeah, I mean, I, my opinion is that was quite a promising display from EG. You know, they managed to battle their way all the way back to 15-12. Uh, and, you know, maybe you could say that some of those rounds that they actually won, they shouldn't have, for example. Um, I mean, there was obviously the, the shot from Capio, and also there was a ninja defuse at some point as well on the, uh, on the exact same site. So, you know, maybe Mouse Sports took their foot off the pedal just a little bit um, towards the end of that one. But either way, EG, obviously, if they can play this out to a 16-14, despite the loss, um, they're going to keep their round differences real close in this one, which obviously, with a six-team group, I think is 
probably going to be quite important moving forward. And, that, and ben, Roman's just knife fraud in the uh, kind of going back round. to what I was saying at the beginning in terms of how I saw this kind of stacking up as a kind of a proven ground game for EG. Like I, I wanted to see are they ready to go to that next level just on an individual basis, not necessarily how they're ranked in the group because they're doing well as it is. Yeah. And it kind of felt like that was probably a, a, a decent analysis. Like they're good. At times they can be good and they can hang with the teams and they can put together rounds. But it still feels like between the really elite teams when they're playing really well and they're on their game like Mouse were in the first half there, there's still a little bit of separation between these teams, whether it's experience, whether it's kind of the, the tactical understanding or having the lineup that they do. It still feels like there's something a little bit off for EG. But, I mean, that could still be changed within this tournament if they can figure out kind of make inroads towards whatever that is. And, of course, that will put Mouse Sports further into the lead, actually. They, of course, coming into this game, had six points um, uh, to the three of Fnatic, Frag Executors, and, of course, EG. Um, so they'll go up to nine, um, which leaves them in a really, really strong position. I mean, their next game coming up uh, will be against Frag Executors, who are uh, also doing fairly well in the group stage. Uh, but I think the next game, I'm not 100% sure. Maybe I can get confirmation of this. Uh, but I think it's going to be Fnatic versus MTW. Yes, it will be Fnatic versus MTW. Uh, but that's coming up in just a little while here. We're going to go to a quick commercial break. When we come back, we've got a raffle here. So if you're here in the audience and you want to win some stuff, you should probably stick around. Um, and when we come back, it'll be Fnatic versus MTW.